A recent survey discovered that attendance at Church of England services had fallen below a million for the first time. Some churches are being forced to close. Many lie empty and others are sold and often turned into flats. So what's being done? Well, there is some good news. On today's Songs of Praise, I'll be discovering the creative things that people are doing to keep their church at the heart of the community. And no, you're not seeing things. The church is a post office. We meet some members of the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service who are firefighting for Christ. They don't need to be in a church to serve. We can all serve our communities in whatever place we're at. One, two, three, go! And Josie's in central Manchester at a church taking worship music to the next level. And where the pastors seem to want to steal our jobs. Oh, welcome to Songs of Praise this morning. It's great to have you with us. We have some great music, including a performance from one of Scotland's finest, Barbara Dixon. And it's the second week of Lent. So for those of you who've given something up, here's a hymn of encouragement. Visit any village, town or city and the one thing you'll find is a church. They're an important part of our heritage. The Church of England has 16,000 of them around the country. But there's a problem. Fewer and fewer people are attending the services. And although people may like the idea of their local church and its sense of history, they may not want to pay for its upkeep. I've come to St James's Church in London. Like many, their day begins with early morning prayers for parishioners. 
Oh Lord, open our lips. For years, they were a very small congregation worshipping in a huge, empty church until their vicar, the Reverend Andrew Forshaw Kane, came up with a plan. Is this a church or is it a post office? It's a church, it's a post office, and it's a whole lot more. Come on inside and I'll show you. <laughs> wow, it's really noisy. It's like it's a post office and so much more. So much more. How do you get a post office in a church? We had a tweet in 2014 from a local estate agent. They were looking for a shop front for the new post office and I said, I haven't got a shop front, but I've got a really big church. And that's not the only thing you've got here, is oh, it? Oh no, we have all kinds of things in here now. We have a cafe and we employ a bunch of people there as well. And this play centre And the big is play centre. Big and huge. noisy. Local mums were saying there wasn't much in the area for them to do with their kids and it seemed a perfect marriage. We get three and a half thousand people a week through the building. What do you think of people who think that churches should be a place of worship and quiet contemplation? Well, I think they can be at times, but they can also be places of life and enthusiasm and engagement, and that's what this place is. So you, you, you have all of this, you have all this engagement, you also have all of this, the high altar, Everything. the services that are happening here. How do you maintain it as a place of faith? When we built the place, we consciously chose not to separate out all of this from the worship space. So yes. it all flows in one to the other. So God is watching over everything that we do here. And that's an important message, I think, to send to people who come in here, that all of life is important to God. And we have Sunday worship when all of this is closed. And it is a place of quiet and contemplation and prayer and worship. And the congregation appreciate that. When Andrew came up with this idea, I thought he was mad. Look, I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's become a social hub for the neighbourhood. The play area, personally, I don't like it. But I do understand its purpose as well. What it does, it brings people into the church who actually absorb the ambience of the church whilst conducting sort of secular activities like going to the post office. A church is about family and community. That's what, exactly what this is. <laughs> The congregation has doubled, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It was from a very low ground. We're about 40 to 50 people on a Sunday now. And we're now getting children and young families coming, which we didn't get before. And do you think that that's as a direct result of them having come in here first? I'm sure that's exactly the reason why they're coming to us, because they are here, they are comfortable with the space, and when they come back on a Sunday morning, they're in a familiar environment, which isn't intimidating, and they know is welcoming.